Hello all and welcome back. This is Crooked Leg here for Operation Barbarossa for the turn of July 1940. Uh, a couple of things have changed since we last talked. Uh, the U.S. is now officially at war with all of the Axis powers. Uh, the Japanese declared war on them on their turn for this year, or this this turn, and of course the U.S. declared war um, earlier at the uh, the end of the British French turn on uh, on Italy and Germany. So we are now in a state of war with all of the Axis powers. And the, the map does look grim, but we will do our very best to ensure that democracy thrives and that we leave the world in a good state. So, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started here and kind of take a look at what the U.S. has purchased. So the U.S. at the end of their last turn had $47. Of course, we'll bump to wartime income this turn. We did lose the Philippines, so that will reduce $2 off of our chart. Um, so right now our income is at $61, and then of course we'll have our bonus for controlling all the U.S. land zones um, in home country. So um, without further ado, here we go. So the U.S. has a couple of things that we're going to look at this turn. So the Japanese so kindly attempted to convoy raid the Rio de Janeiro, New York line, and the rules state that if it is convoy raided, then a plus one may be added to any influence alignments that the U.S. attempts to do for the Pan-American countries or nations. And we are going to attempt to influence Brazil for $3, and then we're also going to attempt to align uh, Mexico for $3. And so we need a four for each of those when we'll do our rolls. Um, it doesn't mention having to be a successful convoy rate, it just mentions being convoy rated, so we, we should get the plus one bonus. Uh, let me know, though, if uh, there's any disputes. Um, additionally, since the U.S. was declared war on last turn, uh, we now have an additional four infantry that are on our place units box, so those four infantry are right here, so that we will take those into account. And then, of course, we have our $47 that we're going to spend this turn. We're spending the full $47, um, and then the KMTF2. Um, so the KMT, the other $2 are just going to buy a militia as usual. And then the United States is going to do a couple of things. So we're spending $6 to do the influence of the Pan-American uh, Nations. And then we're spending $10 for two U.S. Special Infantry uh, Marine Corps units. So that's 16 total so far. $4, we're lend leasing an artillery to the British. So that brings us to 20 We are going to spend $22, and we're buying two self-propelled artillery and two medium armor. So that's 22, six for each of the medium armor and then $5 for each of the self-propelled. So that's 22 total there. So 22 plus 20 puts us at, at 42. And then we're gonna spend the additional $5 and we're going to move our aircraft carrier from stage three to stage two on the production chart. So that is what we will be doing for our purchases this turn. And now we will go ahead and do our tech rolls. So the United States has six tech rolls. And we are going to start off with. Make sure it's zoomed out here so you can see the whole area. Yep. Okay, so we're going to get started and we're going to attempt to first roll a seven or higher for long range aircraft. And this will put us at stage four if we are successful. We got a nine. So long range aircraft is unlocked. So we'll mark that here and I'll update the chart. Okay, and then we are going to do a roll for wartime economy. So we need a seven or high. We got an 11. So that will move up. I believe that that's just going to stage two. Yeah, stage two. Okay, and we're gonna do attack transports and we need an eight or high. We got a 10. Okay, so that will move to stage three. And then improved construction, we need a seven or higher. And we got a 10. Boy, we're on a roll today. <laughs> all right. Finally, we've had awful rolls all game. Now it's turning tight a little bit here, okay. Do heavy bombers and we need a nine or higher. And we got it. We got a ten. 
Okay, sorry, sorry, Axis. I'm sure you're not happy with these tech rolls here, but uh, I have to say that this is impressive. Okay, so we're we're five for six so far. So let's see if we can get jet fighters at uh, stage three. We can get eight or higher, and we got a two. Okay, so we broke our streak, unfortunately, but nevertheless, a very, uh, very, very good tech roll for the United States. So. All right, so we've done that. We'll go ahead and do the two rolls for the um, for for Brazil and for Mexico. So for Brazil, we need a four or higher or lower, excuse me. And we got a twelve, so that's a miss. And then for Mexico, we need a four or lower, and we got a five, so we missed that as well. So neither one of those nations. Um, will technically be on this turn. And let me know in the comments whether or not it's technically rolled at the end of the U.S. turn during the uh, place units phase or if it's rolled uh, at the beginning during the production phase. So let me know uh, in the comments and uh, I'll adjust for next turn. Doesn't have an impact this turn, but it might next turn if, uh, if we do it again. Um, so that's done there. We're not going to place any units just yet because we do have a couple of uh, combats or at least one that we're gonna do, and then we'll have some non-combat, of course. So, over here for the United States, there's going to be two combats that are gonna take place in the Pacific for the United States. Our first one is going to be a raid, convoy raid by this sub, but it's in C-Zone 91, and it's going to move to C-Zone 55. And so it is going to do a convoy raid there, so, and then our other combat move we are going to do is we are going to move the two submarines from C-Zone 64 to C-Zone, actually, let me think here. Yeah, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to move the two battleships, the three destroyers, and the two heavy cruisers from C-Zone 29, and they're going to move two C-Zones from 64 and 68 into 68 and attack that light cruiser. So we'll do that real quick. And that should be all of the combats. And then uh, the other thing is we're going to bring this coastal sub in from 62. And it has one in increased movement because of the submarine base. So it'll come in there as well. So we'll have one surprise attack there. So we'll do that. And then let's see. So that's it over there. We don't have any combat that's going to take place on the Atlantic side at all this round. So we'll go ahead and do these rolls real quick. So first, let's do the convoy raid. Zoom out. All right. So the black die is going to be for the US. We get a plus two to our modifier because it's a sub. Excuse me. So we got five plus two gives us seven. So let's see what the Japanese get. They don't have any modifiers, nothing unlocked. And they got two. So in total, we'll do five damage. And that line, it looks like, is worth $5. So we need the full amount of damage to that line. So that's done there. And then go ahead and get it set up there. So you can see, and we'll bring this back over here. Well, so you can see the, the units that get placed. Okay, so we got the light cruiser. It's gonna be defending at A5. And then for simplicity's sake and time's sake, I'm not gonna worry about necessarily taking off the units. Like I said, there are three destroyers, one coastal sub, two heavy cruisers, and two battleships. So we'll just start with the coastal sub, and the coastal sub will attack at A2. So let's come back up here. Roll, roll. So if we get A2, then it's immediately destroyed. We got a 12, so that misses. So now we'll do one regular round of combat. So we're going to do start with the two battleships, and they will attack at eights. And of course we hit, so the light cruiser is eliminated. So let's roll for the light cruiser. The light cruiser is at a five or less. And it got a 10, so it misses, no hits. So no casualties for the US attacking that light cruiser. The light cruiser is eliminated. It was in C zone. Is it 
68. Yeah, see zone 68. Okay, so now we will move on to non-combat for the U.S. There will be a combat for KMT, and I guess we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Um, so, a couple of things that's going to happen here. So, the full KMT force, other than the militia, is going to move from Yunnan into Shushuan. So, that means we are bringing in seven infantry, one mountain infantry, two AA guns, three artillery, and four cavalry into Shushuan. That is a mountain territory, so there will be a mountain penalty for the units attacking into it, and there is only one militia in the territory to defend. So, one thing to note, if there are tens or higher rolls, so if I roll a ten or higher for any KMT infantry or cavalry, they will retreat back to Yunnan. So, we will go ahead and roll for them. I'm not going to pull them off again because, like I said, it's one militia. And if it, if it starts to get bogged down in terms of what's retreated and what hasn't, then we can pull it off. But uh, I don't foresee this lasting too long. So, there are mountain penalties for everything. So, everything will be reduced by one value. So, let's start with the... Cavalry, so there are four cavalry attacking at twos or less. So four, twos, and all those are misses. And I don't believe yeah, none of them will retreat, so we're good there. And then we've got seven infantry that are going to be attacking at ones, but we do have three artillery. So we will roll first for three of them that are going to attack at twos because they're going to pair up. Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here. I need to do the, the first strikes for the artillery. So there are three first strikes. They are reduced because of the mountain penalty, so they'll only attack at twos. Yeah. So we got it. Hey, we got a two. So that makes it easy. And we got a nine there. Cool. So that's eliminated right off the bat. Um, there's been discussion before about what needs to what needs to roll to see if they retreat or not. So um, technically, it was first strike. So let me know what you want to do, uh, Fighting Irish or uh, Five Star General. If you want me to roll for all of the infantry. Um, Actually, I'll go ahead and do that real quick. It's not a big deal. So there's seven infantry. The mountain infantry doesn't count because it's just regular infantry. So seven infantry. If we get any tens or higher, they'll retreat back to Yunnan. Okay, so we got two infantry that will retreat back. Just so that they, that way it's not questioned one way or the other. So let's see. Come back over here. Okay, so again, there was a first strike hit with the artillery. I went out of turn there, and I apologize for that, but uh, nevertheless, no impact for the Japanese one way or the other. Um, so, I'm destroying all my units here. <laughs> okay. So, we will now control this territory. It doesn't have any value, so no change there. But... We are going to leave two infantry behind because they retreated. We're going to break this infantry up here to five. Get some chips. All right, so there will be five infantry that are moving in along with the two AA guns. There's five infantry, there's the one mountain infantry, and then the four cavalry, and none of them retreated, so we're good there. And then the three artillery as well. So we'll move them up. So that is what it looks like. So Yunnan still has three, four, five, six militia, and of course two infantry that retreated back, and then Singai has three militia. So. Not a huge change there. There's Singhai, just so you can see. Um, so, so that's that there. 
Um, we'll go ahead and finish off the KMT just so that that way it doesn't have to be messed with. We're still going to do non-combat moves for the U.S., but um, for this matter, it's not going to impact anything. We're going to put the last militia here in Yunin. And so now there's one additional militia there in Yunin. So, so that's all the uh, the combat and non-combat moves we'll do, of course, for the KMT. So they are done for the remainder of this round. Um, back to the U.S. So we do have a few non-combat moves we're going to do for the U.S. over here in the Pacific. So first, we have a coastal sub that is in C zone 19 that is going to move to C zone 81. So move him up. So he is there. And then we're going to take, excuse me, the two submarines. One submarine is going to go to C zone 95, and the other is going to go to C zone 67. And they both came from C zone 64. So that's done there. And then, let's see here. Okay. So that is done there. The only other thing we're going to do is we will move the two transports in C zone 29 down here. So those transports are done. So the U.S. is done for the most part over here. We are going to rail move. Actually, we're going we're gonna to rail move the U.S. Marine Corps unit from San Francisco, and it is going to get placed in... New York. So, show that here in a minute, but it is now in New York. So, there's a strategic rail movement used there. And then we're going to move the two mountain infantry from the southwest United States into San Francisco. So, there are now two mountain infantry and two regular infantry in total in San Francisco. So, we are done there. And now let's move over to the Atlantic side, a couple of changes over here. So unfortunately, like we said, nothing got aligned this turn, so we won't change anything in terms of Brazil or uh, Mexico. But we do have a couple of things that are going to take place. So this light cruiser and destroyer that are on escort duty in C Zone 22 are going to move to C Zone 21. They're still going to be on escort duty. So those units are moved. And then we are going to move the aircraft carrier in C zone 30 down to C zone 76. So it will move there along with both of the tactical bombers. So they're going to land on it. So essentially no changes there, but they all three are in 76 now. We're also going to move the destroyer and light cruiser from C zone 21 to C zone 76. There is a major port here in the Canadian, Canadian Maritimes. So we're gonna move one, two, three, four. So C zone 30, 43, 72, 76. So there's four. So it's a legal move. We'll move to there. So that's done there. And then Here, we are going to take the medium bomber in C zone, or not C zone, in New York, from, and it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six, and land in Gibraltar. Normally, it would only move five, but there is an airfield in New York. Yep, there's an airfield, so it does have six movement. Plus, we also have improved or not improved, excuse me, long-range aircraft at stage four, so it's finished as well. So technically it has an additional move as well, so we'll move that to Gibraltar. So that is in Gibraltar. And then the fighter that is here in New York is going to move down, so it's just going to go from New York down to the southwestern United States, it, which is technically Florida, but that's where it's at. So uh, from New York, one, two, three, four, doesn't really matter. It's gonna make it either which way we send it, but it's there. 
So that is there. Um, the two transports that are in C-Zone 43 are going to move up to C-Zone 30. So move them up. So that is done there. So let's remove some of these tokens. So we can knock those out. There's the U.S. Marine. They got placed there. Okay, so that is done there. Um, we are going to take both of the coastal subs from C-Zone 30, and we're going to move them two spaces because of the major port, or not major port, major shipyard, and they're gonna go from to C-Zone 31 and end in C-Zone 32. So move them up. And then we're going to bring the destroyer from C-Zone 104, actually, We'll leave him in 104. We're, ah, uh, think about this. Nope, I take it back. We better go ahead and move him too. So we're going to move the destroyer and the two battleships to C zone 79. So we'll go to two spaces. Well, in their movement in that C zone. So they are stopped there. No problems on their side. Um, So we are done with the U.S. there. Um, okay, so that's it for non-combat, I believe, for the United States. Yeah, that's it for the United States. So let's go ahead and place our units. So first, we will go ahead and update the production chart. So the battleship, or not battleship, excuse me, the aircraft carrier in stage three goes to stage two. And then we are going to place a few units. So we have the two US Marines, so our specialized units, US Marine Corps, whatever you wanna call them. They're five bucks, they're expensive. Um, anyways, um, so we're gonna place both of them here in New York. So we'll check that out, but essentially they're here in New York now as well. We have four infantry that we are going to place in New England. Well, nope, I take it back. Can't, we don't have that production power there. Um, we'll place them in the, the Northeast. Yeah, the Northeast. So we have four there. We're placed in the Northeast. And then we have our two medium armor, along with our two self-propelled artillery. And we will place one of the self-propelled artillery here in New England. And then we will place another self-propelled artillery here in the Northeast. So that makes five units there. And we'll place the two medium armor in the New York. So or within our production capacities there. So no issues on that. And then the only other item we have to place this turn would be the artillery that the U.S. lend leased to the British. And that is going to be lend leased to the British Midlands in there. So we'll put that there and I'll change it to the, the British artillery. So that's done. Um, and then, of course, we'll go ahead and collect our income. So the KMT are down to a dollar. They don't collect any bonuses because the Burma Road is technically closed because Burma is now Japanese controlled. Um, so we do have just one dollar this turn for the KMT. And then the U.S., they would normally have $63. They did lose the Philippines to the Japanese, so we go down to 61. And then, of course, we still get our $12 bonus for controlling all of the U.S. home country territories. So we will have $73 for the U.S. So again, a dollar for the KMT and $73 for the U.S. going into the next turn. And so that is it for this round for the U.S. Uh, 
We have reliable sources that indicate that there is a conference taking place in Turkey by the Axis powers to discuss the strategy moving forward as they have done quite well in their campaign in the East, in the Far East, um, in the West. Just about everywhere they've done quite well this game, so uh, it'll be interesting to see where things move from here. But uh, that's on the agenda, is what my understanding is. One thing to note, there was a, a correction that needed to be made for the British for two aircraft that were on uh, map. Technically, they needed to come off of map before they could be used um, for map in another sea zone. So the medium bomber that got moved to 79 from 48 landed in Gibraltar instead. And, then, and so it's not on map. And then of course, the same thing for the fighter that was in 114. It is in so, uh, yeah, Southern, I believe that's Southern. Nope, Southwest. Southwest Africa and is not in 115. So it is not in 115 on map. So both of them are landed. And then of course the British will do what they wish with them going into the next turn. But uh, I believe that covers it. So like I said, if, uh, if you got any questions, drop them below, uh, but otherwise, uh, that's it for the U.S. turn. So let's go ahead and just do a recap real quick of what units are in what territories and sea zones. So there are two coastal subs in sea zone 32. Okay, sea zone 32, two coastal subs. There is a light cruiser and a destroyer in sea zone 21. And then we have three transports, a destroyer and two heavy cruisers in sea zone 30. There is one self-propelled artillery here in New England. There's one self-propelled artillery here in the northeast, along with four infantry. There is one light tank, two medium tanks, and three U.S. Marine um, units there in New York. We have one fighter that is down here in the uh, southwest United States. Uh, this camera. <laughs> okay, there we go. There's the fighter there. We have a destroyer, a light cruiser, an aircraft carrier, and two tactical bombers here in C Zone 76. And then we have a destroyer and two battleships here in C Zone 79. And then we'll go over here to the Pacific side, take a look. There's a coastal sub here in C zone 18. And then we've got a submarine that is in C zone 55. And again, there was five damage that was done to that convoy line for the Japanese. And then we have two US infantry in San Francisco and two mountain infantry in San Francisco. We have two transports in C zone 64. We have one submarine in C zone 95 and we have another submarine here in C zone 67. We have a coastal sub, three destroyers, two heavy cruisers, and two battleships in Sea Zone 68. We have four infantry, two AA guns, and one militia in Hawaii. And then that's it for the US. And then of course, as we discussed before, for the KMT, there are three militia in Singai. There are three, four, five, Six, seven. I think so. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah. There are seven militia in Yunnan along with two infantry. There are two AA guns, five regular infantry, four cavalry, three artillery, and one mountain infantry in Sichuan. And that is it for the USKMT turn. So thank you all for tuning in and have a great holiday weekend. So happy Easter, everyone. Crooked Lake out.